Hey, it is your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. And we're zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question, and that is to look at some of the oddities or peculiarities in the psychopath. And they've asked this to be specifically on the female psychopath, but I want you to understand this relates to both sexes. And so we're going to look at sort of the oddities, um, the things that might stand out, the peculiarities of this personality type. Um, a psychopath is someone who has a neural network of wiring firing that is different or abnormal than the average person. It is thought to be, you know, one in a hundred or one percent of the population is psychopathic. Um, you know, the stereotypical is the you know aggressive, violent criminal who has no remorse for their um, for their actions. So uh, to typify, um, they lack a conscience, so a, a lack of morality, a lack of right or wrong, or a lack of feelings when they have hurt somebody. So they don't have a conscience. So this enables them to commit grave acts of hurt, exploitation, and lack of empathy of others where they're really able to pursue quite, quite aggressively whatever it is that they want. And oftentimes they can go undetected. They don't have to end up in jail. They can be, you know, the corporate psychopaths. Um, you know, they, they can be, um, hold very uh, responsible uh, positions in society. They quote unquote look normal. Um, they don't stand out from the crowd, but yet they do have a certain charisma, a certain je ne sais quoi, when you are in proximity or around them. In other words, you know, if you're just walking down the street, sure, you might sense that someone is unsafe or untrustworthy, but once you are kind of in proximity with them, you'll find certain peculiarities. For one, um, they can be very uh, aggressive or promiscuous when not appropriate. In other words, sexualizing things which are not appropriate to be sexualized. To the psychopath, the female psychopath, male as, as, as well, they can sexualize everything. Um, and it becomes quite corrupt because what it does is it um, enables them to uh, essentially psychologically hijack uh, another individual by arousing them in this manner. And it serves as a major uh, distraction and it causes a release of hormones, uh, sex hormones, as well as stress hormones in the victim. To, to which they're kind of in a heightened state of awareness around this person. And in the beginning, it can become very pleasurable. In other words, you have the feeling that, wow, this person is so good looking or charismatic, or they have my attention, or I really can't get my eyes off of them. I can't quite put my finger on it. I feel very drawn to them. These are the experiences that people have relayed while they're in the love bombing or even in the presence of a psychopath. While they are essentially, you know, trying to either assess out the scene, scope the scene, see who it is they can make vulnerable and get what they want, whether it's time, attention, money, a lunch date, a dinner date, um, vacation, information, um, sex, um, a place to uh, park their kids, park their um, identity. And then you, you know, see this sort of um, self-disclosure very early in the relationship. Um, and... Um, there's a term uh, for this where basically they'll just, um, you know, give just all sorts of uh, self-disclosure, which does not, which is way too early in um, the uh, relationship. It's it's a very much of a attenuated um, circumstance. In other words, an attenuated fear where they'll expose certain things about themselves, where, which most people would not. Um, either relationship details, things like credit card information, social security numbers, resumes. And you're like, why are you showing this to me? It's to establish a feeling of trust. And um, a lot of people then fall for this and they go, wow, look at this person. And generally they're, you know, who is exposing so much vulnerable information, they must really trust me. So this is very peculiar behavior. Um, early in the relationship. And then people then on the receiving end tend to think, wow, look at this person, you know, who is, and then the other, you know, uh, quip or peculiarity is that there tends to be some sort of sad story or way for you to quote unquote, feel sorry for them or feel for them in some manner. In other words, to elicit help, to get you to belay your boundaries, open up your soft spot. Um, 
becoming, you know, the, you know, humane part of you, uh, the one who listens, the one who goes out of your way for them, uh, that you, the one who has an abundance of feelings, emotion, um, you know, those people who want to help others, the nurses, um, you know, the social workers, the do-gooders of the world who have that real genuine caring for others. These are the people, you know, who they really kind of look for, who can then, they can get, um, you know, basically their foot in their emotional heart and then pry it open basically with a crowbar and then they just, you know, keep going in and in and in and then exploiting this person to all sorts of, of depths. And, um, you know, these people can become seemingly more genuine than the typical person. So um, it is because of their ability to mimic others and specifically mimic, which means um, imitate the behaviors, sit, telling you what you want to hear, doing what you want them to do to get, again, pry their foot in the door, um, jar it open with a door stopper in your emotional heart so they can further exploit and get whatever it is that they want. Um, and it can be status, it can be um, dates, it can be food, it can be whatever it is, very parasitic in nature. But you'll find they always want something. Um, and so, you know, um, this sort of early self-disclosure in the relationship, um, things that you would not expect them to show you, um, things like medical records, um, you know, uh, job reports, things that are out of, you know, the ordinary, but then make you feel, wow, this person has just confided in me. And then you have social reciprocity um, going on here. The um, psychological term social reciprocity, which means I will do unto others, which you have done unto me. So here you go showing them in equal, uh, you know, equal um, energy, um, that sort of personal information opening up your heart. Uh, here's my social, here's my driver's license, here's my medical record, here's my broken heart. Um, you begin to then respond in like emotion. Um, it's called self-disclosure. And so then you begin opening up and then now the psychopath has ample grounds to be able to suss out your strengths and your weaknesses. See what makes you tick. They're able to pick up more on what makes you tick then you know what makes you tick. In other words, they're very able to seep in the nooks and crannies of your personality and then become that person with which you need them to be. In other words, if you're very lonely, you're kind of isolated, you've been through a breakup, you know, they will all of a sudden become the one who's opening the door for you, buying you lunch, sending you little how are you's, giving you the little wink while they're walking by you getting your attention in this way. These are very peculiar, um, very early in the relationship, and then it just makes people pounce on them and feel like, wow, here's my new best friend. And you know, oftentimes this is with reckless abandon, meaning here is the answer to my prayers. I'll go ahead and abandon my family, my work, my better judgment. And then you have the reducing of your boundaries doing things you never thought you would do before. You see the hyper arousal, um, the over sexualization in inappropriate times and places, um, violating and then getting you further hyper aroused. So you have a concoction of the hormones of arousal and the oxytocin and then the dopamine going within yourself and then coupled with the hormones of stress, which uh, basically then begin to equate to you being hyper aroused to your own uh, destruction, uh, your own self-abandonment, if you will. Um, suddenly things don't become so important anymore. It's like a drug. It's like a drug that you become addicted to. The brain becomes imprinted with this high arousal state. So example, you know, situations that are extreme in nature, the brain holds onto. It carves a very deep sort of um, imprint or neural pathway. And so your brain becomes hyper aroused and then they begin also to wear you down or tire you at the same time. You know, think of the, you know, torture techniques of keeping people up uh, for many hours, um, you know, having them do things which exhaust them uh, physically, 
um, such is the cycle, you know, uh, the cycle continues and continues to break one down, you know, um, pushing the boundaries, pushing your limits. And a lot of people say, then they make the excuse up in their mind that this is all in the name of love. So um, this must be love. So I'm going to work even harder. And then they find themselves being unable to control themselves leaving their work to be with this person, um, being hyper aroused, compulsive uh, masturbation, uh, beginning to feel like um, nothing else matters in the world but this person. Um, they begin to become hyper vigilant, paranoid, suspicious, wondering if their quote unquote new drug is, is you know going to not be available for them, doing whatever the cost is to procure this person in their life so that they can guarantee quote unquote, the next high, the next get together, the next rendezvous. And oftentimes it is um, plagued with some sort of illicit behavior. In other words, you know, don't tell anybody about what we're doing. So then you've got the act of concealment going on, which further isolates the individual. And this can become a downward spiral. Um, very uh, scary uh, for this individual because they don't know what's going on, but then they become essentially like an automatic pilot, like a person who, you know, can't, you know, cannot think um, clearly or rationally because they're on a drug. So this becomes to occur. They might have flash insights where, you know, I should not do this to my family. I shouldn't do this to my work, but they don't pay heed to that little voice. In other words, there's a deluge of feelings which cause them to drown out the little voice. So they continue to seek this individual because it's too good to be true. And then, you know, begins the, um, the word salad, the, um, sort of cryptic meaning, um, the rearranging of emotions or, uh, psychological thought process, cognitive process that the victim engages in. Um, they no longer kind of think the way that they normally do. A lot of people then say, well, we're just falling deeper in love. You know, they begin to experience this. Um, and then, you know, they're then beginning to see things differently. Um, a spoon is no longer a spoon, a no longer is no longer a knife, red is no longer red, um, an ocean is no longer an ocean. It takes on all sorts of different asundry meanings based on what the psychopath is then trying to imprint in you their way of thinking, their verbal assessment, which is, um, which is uh, perverted in nature, meaning abnormal, pathological, not, um, not, uh, for you, not intrinsically correct. Um, it is not based in reality. So you might almost people feel kind of like this sort of um, reckless abandon or they're not in touch with reality. And some people then equate this as pleasurable. I mean, they, but they, it causes them grave uh, psychological distress when they're doing things like um, cashing out their 401k for this person, um, you know, um, uh, uh, compulsively spending, compulsively sexting or, uh, you know, doing things, you know, under the table, so to speak. Um, the hypersexual arousal where they, they cannot, you know, stop masturbating um, in, un, you know, un, inopportune places, times, etc. It overrides um, their better judgment and they cannot stop this. Um, and then they, yet they have an inexplicable compulsion, even, even with all this tension, distress and problems going on, they still want more. It's, you know, they, they, they cannot break free of that. And so, you know, the um, enigmatic <coughs> cryptic uh, language, which uh, is used by the psychopath, which again, you know, uh, oftentimes create a whole deluge of curiosity um, in the individual. You know, why do they talk like this? Why did they say this? This seems so mysterious. Um, they'll make, you know, strange comments, which are out of the abnormal and it, you know, you oftentimes find it might be humorous. Um, but that is also another, um, peculiarity of the psychopath is, um, this sort of a uh, very dark humor, sardonic humor, um, which is, um, very, very dark. Um, and, um, it can be sexual or aggressive in nature, um, very divisive in nature. In other words, um, it kind of is very isolating um, and, uh, pinpointed to you. And so, um, again, you know, these are just some of the peculiarities. So if you have noticed this in the relationship and you are feeling it's time, um, to, you know, for a better life for you, for, you know, to, you know, get this out of the system, then you definitely absolutely positively 
need to detach from this person, from this source, no matter what the core, uh, no matter what the cost, um, because it's very difficult to maintain a sense and path of healing and getting your feedback on the ground while this person is still around you. It is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today, and I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.